Hi, Aaron Dabolo here. I have a new tool for you. It's called the Lazy UVW Editor. It's a script that I wrote that uh, pretty much automates the process from the Lazy UVW video that I did earlier, where you take multiple UV channels and project them differently and mask them in such a way that you, uh, using a tileable texture, don't end up with any seams, any pinching, or anything on whatever uh, shaped object you have. It's a great way to just generically texture something. Um, for the Debris Maker, one of the most common requests I had was to have UV coordinates or textures on them, so this is sort of a way to uh, be a little companion tool for that. Also, uh, this tool will unwrap and bake down all of these UV channels to one map uh, that's bled out and whatever resolution you want and load it back onto the, the, the model so that you don't have to uh, have multiple UV channels in your scene, remove some of that overhead, have simpler materials, do paint and now it's editing, or make them good for game models or whatever. Uh, so take a look, hope you enjoy. To run the script, simply drag it into your viewport or go through max script and run. Without changing any settings, if you just run this on one object, you'll see that it applies UVWs and creates a simple material. If we look at the modifier stack, you'll see that there are two UVW maps, each set to a different channel. The first one is a spherical map, which has a problematic pole. The second is a planar map, which covers that up. If I do a quick render, you can see that the area that would have been pinched has been covered with this green color. Looking into the material editor, you can see that this material, diffuse map, is a composite material with a red checker in UV channel 1 and the green checker in UV channel 2. Also there is a mask on the UV channel 2 that applies it to just the area that we're interested in. If we load a map into the editor, into just one channel, it will use this texture in both UVW channels. Applying it back to the object, you can see that we have our rock texture applied to the object with the texture file loaded into each of the material slots. Doing another quick render, you can see that the area that would have pinching is covered up, although this is stretching quite badly. To solve this, you can add some tiling to the texture. Going back, let's set our tiling to 3. This will affect both U and V tiling, unless you choose to set them independently. Let's load the map into the second slot, which is the cap, and leave its tiling at 1. So we'll have a tile of 3 and a tile of 1. Reapply it, and doing another quick render, you can see that the stretching is much reduced. You can also edit this material after the fact manually to your desire. There you go. Currently the blending map, right here, is a procedurally generated map using the gradient ramp. If you'd like to load your own texture into it, you can select the texture file and then load that map. I've selected this one because it's clear what's going on. And if I clear our texture maps and reapply, you can clearly see the mask in action. The final category of features for the Lazy UVW Editor is the Bake to Map function. And what this lets you do is collapse the multiple UV channels that are being used and render them all to one map. Let's select the destination file. And by hitting this again, you'll see it'll bake it to texture. It has automatically flattened its UVs to one channel that you can see here and baked a texture map to it, then created a material and applied it to that object. If we view this map, you can see our blending has been baked all to one channel and our seams have been bled out so you won't have any black lines showing up. Let's try this on multiple objects. The editor will operate on your selection with whatever maps you have loaded. I'm going to go back to using the procedural map and I'll bake these all down and load them onto maps afterwards. As you can see it's going through each of the objects pretty quickly here and loading them back onto 
the source object. This took about 17 seconds, and here you can see all of our objects have non-pinching, seamless UVs baked down to one channel. Let's do a quick render, and there you have it. There are multiple baking modes that you can use, the best of which is capped sphere, which is why it's the default, but there's also capped shrink wrap, polar blend sphere, and polar blend shrink wrap, which have a different type of UV layout. Because it is a shrink wrap, going one direction, a second direction, and then blended in between them with a cylindrical map. And finally there's a wrapped plane. Which would be good for cylindrical objects. It is a combination of a planar and cylindrical map. Finally with this tool I've done something new. I've added an API. So you can easily make batch operations that have different settings and different textures and run it on your entire scene and bake out a whole bunch of different types of things. Included with the script is a readme text file that contains the information you'll need for this but I'll quickly show you right now. To access the API let's open the listener and paste in this line. It's going to show properties of the definition that the lazy UVW editor builds on open. This definition contains all of the instructions that the editor needs to build a new UVW set and materials. Texture maps, baking options, and noise options. All of these are accessible to be set or read via MaxScript, and once you've done that, simply run the function to perform the operation, uvwfun.applyuvw, if we clear these out, and execute, it performs the whole operation. This way you could script this into your pipeline or do batch operations with dif different texture maps without even having to use the UI. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, like always, if you have any uh, bug reports or feature requests or anything you'd like to say, um, be sure to let me know. You can leave a comment or shoot me an email here. Um, also, like I mentioned earlier, um, this is sort of a companion tool for the Debris Maker, which I want to thank everybody for such an overwhelmingly warm and great response to that. It really makes me feel good that you guys are finding uh, the tool useful. Um, I have a 2.1 release that I've been working on, which has some more things that people have been asking for, and that should be coming out soon whenever I get around to buttoning everything up. Um, so if you want to keep an eye out for that, you can just uh, follow whatever, and uh, it'll show up uh, when I get it done. Thanks again.